Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend and come inside today as we take a look at G.I. Joe Retaliation, the highly anticipated by some sequel to G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. Now, this time around, the Joes are framed for a major crime and the president orders them to be eliminated. Well, when the elimination fails, the surviving Joes spend the movie trying to figure out what exactly happened to make them get uh, uh, you know, annihilated by the president, as well as continuing to thwart the plans of Cobra, who is a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. G.I. Joe Retaliation is an improvement among above the first one by a lot of uh, ways. First off, the writers Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, who brought us Zombieland and who will be bringing us Zombieland 2, uh, definitely chose to go in the vein of the original cartoon rather than try to do a mix-up of uh, serious military and uh, original vein of the cartoon. So I really liked it. They picked a direction, and it definitely had the feel of the cartoon. The overall production design was fantastic, and the vehicles and, and boats and things that they came up with looked like they were modern twists on those classic vehicles, and it really brought me back to my childhood seeing those, especially, uh, you know, just a couple of those vehicles really looked like they were ripped right from the cartoon, and it was great to see that, as well as the costuming in this film uh, looked a lot more feel of the cartoon, especially Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander looked badass. He looked like he was supposed to look, and it was great seeing a live-action version of him. You definitely bought into his character, and that was a pleasant surprise, as well as just every the overall look of it definitely had more of that feel of the cartoon, uh, you know, characters in that. And I really like that. You've got uh, new additions in here as well from the first one. We've got uh, Ray Stevenson um, playing Firefly. Loved his new evil guy, Firefly. Uh, definitely a great addition to the bad guys, to the good guys. Well, we you see them, they get Bruce Willis back. Uh, we get Bruce Willis added to the mix, as well as Dwayne Johnson as Roadblock. Loved his Roadblock character. Definitely was a surprise to see how the direction they took with his character and Dwayne Johnson is an excellent roadblock. I hope we see him back if they do see a sequel because he his character was great. You got some other additions in it as well. Elodie Young as Jinx and you got DJ uh, Catrona as Flint and they were you know they were decent additions but they weren't developed quite as much as uh, you know roadblock and a couple of other uh, characters. So production design and direction they went was great. You know so I enjoyed those. Those were the positive. Though I don't think you need to see it in the three distraction because it's going to take you away from enjoying the action sequences and some of the things flying at you just really, really, uh, you know, make you miss what else is going on on the screen. Now, a few other things with it, though, there are some major plot holes, which I know it's a G.I. Joe cartoon, so, uh, <laughs> excuse me, G.I. Joe movie, so you're not expecting a whole lot, but when there are certain sections that just make questions pop up in your head, even when you're trying not to think about it, um, yeah, are some warning signs there, okay? And some of this dialogue in here was just way too cheesy. You know, I, I just, you know, I know even they had it in the cartoon, but in this one, I think the dialogue could have been a lot better. But there are some great scenes in here, especially when we get up to uh, getting Bruce Willis in the mix, and Bruce and uh, Dwayne Johnson really helped carry some scenes that could have really fell flat. They helped carry those scenes and make them better than what they probably should have been. On the whole, G.I. Joe Retaliation is do doing what a sequel should do. It has improved on the original by leaps and bounds, though I see lots of work uh, for improvement and I think in the hands of a better director, this film could have even been more than what it was. Unfortunately, I still only had to give it two and three quarters stubs, not quite three. Again, I would say go to see it in a matinee in the 2D and you'll enjoy it just as much. Uh, while if you can look past some of the gaping plot holes and some of the really cheesy bad dialogue, I think you'll uh, find that you've got yourself not a too bad action film. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stuck.